Hi everybody, it's Miss D from the Allen County Public Library. I hope this video finds you happy and healthy. So today we are going to be finishing our Quilty Pleasures Nine Patch project. So today I'm going to show you how to put the binding on, which is this white strip that goes all the way around the square. So for today, you will need your thread and a needle, a nice sharp pair of scissors, your binding, and your completed nine patch quilt block. Plus your safety pins will come in handy. You'll see me using my regular straight pins, but the safety pins will work just as well. All right, let's get started. All right, to begin, we're going to need to trim the excess batting and fabric away from our nine patch. So we're gonna just carefully cut that strip that sticks out past this fabric. That way, when we put the binding on, it'll go on evenly. So you're just gonna take your scissors, hold it and carefully cut right up next to the edge of your block. Now, if I was at home, I have a ruler and a rotary cutter that I would just cut straight up the side with to square this block, but I'm using what I have here at the library, which is a nice pair of fabric scissors that have never been used on fabric and they're really sharp. And I'm just gonna continue to cut off this trim. All right, once you have trimmed all of the extra off your nine patch square, you're gonna take your binding and you're gonna open it up and then open it one more time and you're gonna lay the edge right up next to the edge of your block. And we're gonna pin that in place. So this is where your safety pins come in handy. And then I'm gonna pin one right down here at the end, about a fourth of an inch away from the corner. And this is gonna let me know when to stop stitching so that we can make the mitered corner like on this one where it's got that nice even seam. All right, once you have pinned your binding down, you're going to thread your needle, tie off the end, and I'm actually gonna begin up here on sewing it together and leave a nice sized tail for me to work with when I come back and I connect the binding pieces together. So this is just like with sewing together your block and you're, you can actually use this folded seam as your guide to where to sew, but it's just like sewing your pieces together. You're just gonna sew on that line and it's a little harder cause it's thicker so I can't get as many stitches on my needle as I normally do, but that's okay. It just means it's gonna take a little bit longer to sew, but you're gonna keep sewing till you get to this first corner and then we're gonna learn how to make the mitered corner. All right, so I have sewed all the way to where my pin is at and I have made sure my needle and thread are coming out of the backside of my block. All right, so I'm going to take the pin that's holding that corner out so it looks like this. And then I'm going to fold to this side to get my corner made. So we're going to make a nice little triangle right here. And then I'm going to take my binding while holding down this triangle. You want to keep the triangle and I'm gonna bring it back over here. And I'm gonna place a pin in it so it holds it down, keeping my nice triangle right there. And I've folded this piece on top. And then I'm gonna pin it in place until I get close to this far side and I'll leave me a pin at the end so I remember where to stop. 
All right, once you have it laid out and pinned, you can begin sewing again. And you're just gonna bring your needle and thread up right to that corner where your sewing line and that triangle meet. So it's gonna give you a nice corner. And I'm gonna sew a little ways up so you can see what this is gonna look like when we unfold it after we've sewn on the top part of the binding. Sorry, my thread keeps getting hung in my pins. All right, so after you've sewn a little bit and you wanna check your mitered corner, you can pull your pin out, unfold it, and look. It made that nice line on our mitered corner. So you're gonna to continue to sew and repeat the same process on each corner. All right, now when you get to the last corner, you're only gonna sew just a little ways past the corner so that I can show you how to join your binding pieces so you create an almost nearly invisible seam with your binding. All right. All right, so for this next part, you will actually need a ruler and a pencil. So you're going to open your binding all the way up on this one side where we began and measure how wide your binding is. Mine is measuring three inches and one quarter. So you're gonna take this piece and starting where they overlap at, you're gonna measure three inches and one quarter or however wide your piece was and you're gonna mark it because this is gonna be where you cut your binding piece. So now I'm just gonna make me a straight line to cut on. All right. And then I'm just gonna cut the binding right there. Okay, so remember, you want them to overlap the width of the binding. All right, so you have trimmed your pieces and they overlap the width of your binding. And what you're gonna do, ridge side to ridge side, is place those pieces together like you're making a plus sign. And then you're gonna pin it in place. This will help so that it stays still while you're trying to sew it together. So it should look like that with your ridge sides facing each other. So right side to right side. And then you're just simply going to sew from corner to corner, just straight right across through there. And then we'll come back and see the next step. All right, once you have sewn it together through there, you're going to take your scissors and carefully cut about a fourth of an inch from your seam. So you're just cutting off this little triangle and then your binding will be ready. You can press this down with an iron or you can press it with your fingers. Either way, it's your preference. And then we're gonna continue sewing until we meet where we began. All right, once you get back to where we began at the very beginning of adding our binding, you are now ready to fold your binding back down and then bring it to the other side. And you can pin it in place. So you just bring it down and around and you can pin it in place.
All right. So you can flip it back over, see how your front looks. I think it looks very nice. All right. When I come back, we'll show you how to stitch the back closed. All right. Once you have your binding where you can bring it onto the back side, just pick one of the sides of your square to begin with. You're going to take your needle and thread and just bring it through on the back side. That way your knot is hidden. Now there are many ways you can choose to sew on batting. For this project, I'm just gonna do a simple one where I go through the binding layer and just the back side of the backing fabric. So you will not see my threads on the front of the quilt. So you're just gonna go through carefully the first layer of the backing fabric and just your binding. And I'm actually just gonna make it where it does a nice little stitch across the back. I feel like it looks nice with the quilting Miss Chelsea has done. Now you can choose to do a blind stitch on this, which is where you would sew between these two fabrics and then tighten it together. But I think this looks fine since it's a hand quilted square to go ahead and do just this kind of top stitch. And I'm going through just enough where I'm catching the backing fabric, but I'm not going through on the other side so I don't see my stitches on the front. I'll come back and show you how to fix your corners. All right, so as you're sewing along, you're gonna to get to the corner. And so what you're gonna do is just simply press down the one side like so, and then bring that other side over top of it and match your corner to where you have your mitered seam and your edges meet. You might have to work with it a little bit to get it to line up just right. But once you do, you can take one of your pins pin it in place. The fabric's getting a little thick for my pins. But once you get it pinned in place, all right, you can go on with your seam and just sew on around and tack down that edge. You don't actually have to sew up the corner strip because once you sew it here and over here, that's going to be held down and it's not going to go anywhere. And if you want to, you can sew right up to the edge of the corner and then fold the other side of the binding down and then begin to stitch again. Just like so, and then it'll hold that corner down for you. All right, I hope you have enjoyed making your nine patch block. And remember, even if it's not perfect, a finished block is way better than it being perfect. Because guys, seriously, I quilt all the time. And if I depended on my quilt being perfect for me to finish it, then I would never finish a quilt because all of my quilts have some kind of flaw. And I was actually noticing on this, some of my corners didn't even match up all the way. It's just part of it. There's gonna be mistakes in them and that's okay. As long as it's finished, great job. You did it. It's gonna look awesome. I hope you have enjoyed this. I would love, love, love to see finished pictures of your creation if you don't mind sharing them. Thank you for quilting along with us on Quilty Pleasures, and I hope you have a happy and safe week.